Good morning, internet. I wanted to do a quick video just talking about the basics of modular synthesis because, I don't know, I feel like there are a lot of videos about this stuff, but I've had a few friends ask me and I just figured I may as well do a quick run through of just the basic principles, try and demystify some of it for you all. So, first and foremost, I've got a VCO here and it's going into a mixer and that mixer is going into my audio out source and uh, it sounds like this. It's just your basic triangle wave and of course if I move the frequency it changes the pitch. So the reason I'm showing this is because that's just your raw oscillator sound. When you plug an oscillator directly into uh, an audio input, you're just getting that sound forever. It never changes because it needs to be modulated with other signals in order to sound like something that you want it to sound like, like a melody uh, or a rhythm or something. Otherwise, it's just a constant stream. It's good to think of it like I guess like a hose or something. When it's on, it's just on and the water's just flowing. And it's the same with an oscillator. The sound is just always happening. Even when it's not plugged in, it's happening. That's just the nature of how they work. So what you need to make an oscillator sound how you think it does, if you're familiar with other synthesizers, is you need uh, something to tell it when to go on and off and something to tell it what pitch it should be playing. And just over here, I've got a little quick demonstra demonstration of uh, gates, because gates are effectively a gate is if when you hit a key on a synthesizer, you're opening a gate. So you are opening the volume effectively of that sound. And so this is what a gate looks like on a scope. And it's just on, off, on, off, basically. And you can see I've got a few gates lined up here. They're being run by this clock here. And that's just to demonstrate what gates are. There's no pitch information. It's literally just an on and an off, and that's it. And the length, the, the distance of time between when it's on and when it's off determines how long it's being held for. And we'll go into a bit more of that later. But this is just an extremely basic introduction to what uh, gates are and what oscillators are on their own. So let's move down to this other example that I have here. Um, so I've got a sequencer from VCV. I've got a quantizer. I've got that same VCO again, which is going into this scope so you can see what it looks like. I have a filter and a VCA, and I have an envelope generator, and this scope is showing what the envelope is doing. So, um, firstly, I would say scopes are extremely useful when you're learning, and it's really good that VCV just has one built in as part of its uh, basic module set. But this sequencer, it doesn't require a clock to run it, because it has an internal clock, but most sequences, as we'll get to later, require a clock as well. But I figured this would be a good place to start because it actually combines a few different principles into one package. So firstly, these knobs control the frequency signal, or they can control anything really. But in this case, they're controlling the pitch of the VCO. Um, these buttons here control whether or not those steps as in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, are active. So if I turn one off, it won't play this one. And if I turn this one off, it won't play that one. Now, I don't want this to get too confusing because basically we've got three rows here. Uh, this, as you can see from these three outputs, uh, this is, and it's called sequence three. You can do three separate sequences with this sequencer. Um, you can 
uh, I believe, make it one long sequence if you want, but that's not how it's set up by default. And we can control the pitch and we can control, uh, we can send gates, or in this case, trigs. And there is a distinction between a trig and a gate, um, which we will get to later. But firstly, I've got the CV1 output, which is this row here, going into a quantizer. And a quantizer is the thing that's going to lock those frequencies into uh, defined intervals like you have with a scale. And you can see this is just like a little piano roll um, here. We can turn notes on and off. Uh, but at the moment, I've just got it set to C major because why not? So without the quantizer, it will sequence these pitches, but they will be completely out of scale. Um, and I'll demonstrate that right now. I'll just turn it on. So this is what it sounds like in scale. But if I take that out and just... You can hear it's, it's kind of cool, but it's all over the place. It's very out of tune, kind of is a vibe in its own way. But uh, yeah. So yeah, that's all out of whack. So let's put it back. And as you can tell, when I disconnect, it just plays one note. So let's just do that. Oh, sorry. Let's just do this. Um, also, uh, just a quick note, uh, I have a bit of a color-coded system here for my cables. Um, blue is audio, red is like modulation, um, and yellow is gates, clocks, trigs, timing. Um, just in case anyone's interested why I have these colors. Um, anyway, so I've got this sequence playing, um, and it's going out into this VCA, into the VCF. And so why I need this VCA? Well, we've already kind of demonstrated that, um, the VCO without any modulation is just a hose turned on constantly streaming out audio. Well. The VCA is the thing that, uh, it's a, basically just a volume control. Think of it like uh, on a mixer, you know, you have your faders. This is a fader, effectively. The only difference is, is that we can control the fader with other signals. Um, and this is how it works on any synthesizer. It's just that in modular, you have to connect all of this stuff yourself. So. Here we have our VCA, and the thing that's controlling how high or how much volume we give it is the envelope. And at the moment, I've got just a long decay, no sustain, bit of release. And we trigger the envelope with a gate. So the envelope doesn't just happen, you know, we have to trigger it. And if we take this gate away, nothing happens. Even though the pitch is still changing, and as you can see here, the audio is still coming out into the VCA, nothing's happening here. Um, I could make it happen by pushing this little button here. But I can also just let this sequencer press it in time for me. Uh, why would I press it myself when the machine can press it for me? So that's basically, that's basically modular synthesis. There is obviously so much more, um, but that's kind of the nuts and bolts. I do also have this same envelope, uh, a signal coming out from it. I just realized that I've actually got uh, wrong, wrong, ah, wrong color coding. So let's just fix up some of this color coding. All right, that's better. So if I bring this modulation on the cutoff up, 
This envelope is also affecting the cutoff in the exact same way that it's affecting the volume of the VCA. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and of course on this scope we can see by By changing it we can see that it changes and we can hear that it changes. Alright, so let's move on. Down here I have another example uh, and this time I do have a clock here um, and this is essentially the same exact example except for in this case, let's unmute it, in this case I have the gates and the pitch sequencing decoupled from one module into two separate modules to demonstrate um, just because this is like the kind of the fundamental aspect of modular synthesis that once you kind of understand this a lot of other things unravel from there so um, if your sequencer is just pitch firstly a sequencer doesn't have to control just pitch it can control anything you like but they are often used for pitch because they're designed to kind of to allow for different frequencies at different intervals and different timings to which that that works for pitch but it works for other things too but in this case i have a gate sequencer which is just on this first row here and it's 16 steps it's being clocked by that clock over there um the gate out of here is going into the clock input of the ADDR sequence sequencer from Bog Audio. Now, I could clock it with the clock, but the thing about clock signals and gates is they're the same thing. A clock is just a continuous gate, like a metronome, I guess. And so I can clock this sequence with a different timing than just a metronome. I can clock it with literally any kind of timing I want because a clock signal is just gates in a regular rhythm. So in this case, you can see there's no gate signal coming out because at the moment I have no gates activated, but let's just add a few. I might make it go a bit faster. Let's go up to four. So we got this rhythm now, but there's no pitch information happening. Let's just bring this cutoff up. So not all sequences have this, but if I right click on the ADDR, I get a range of different output voltages. The maximum being plus 10 um, and the minimum being plus 1. But the reason why this is important is because if it's on 10, these knobs have a huge wide range of frequencies and I'll demonstrate that right now. Like, there's something cool about that, but it's ex quite extreme, right? And you can see on the scope here how the, the, the extreme range of pitches that we're getting. Um, so you might want this extreme range for modulation, but you don't really want it for pitch, usually. So I might bring it back down to two, and it will bring the range of pitch uh, into a much more reasonable spectrum. So, because it's not being clocked by regular intervals like the sequence we just saw before, it's moving through the sequence at a different rhythm. And we can also change the number of steps that this sequence plays. So, it'll just 
rotate around these five. And because there's a difference in number of gates in the cycle and number of steps in the sequence, you get kind of this uh, ever evolving, it's, it's out of sync with itself. Let's bring it back up to eight. I might also just hit put the reset on this and so that when I hit reset on the clock it syncs them right back to the start. So I hope that that kind of demonstrates how pitch and gates are separate but how the interplay between them is completely integral to understanding modular synthesis. Um, let's just make these colors correct again because I'm fucking with my own color coding. Um, let's bring up this envelope a bit on the filter. So, yeah. Let's move on to the next demonstration, and I can show you something else. So, down here, I have a very similar setup in that I've got a sequencer, this time from Count Modular. Uh, great modules from Count Modular, by the way, really incredible stuff. Um, and I've got a Euclidean sequencer here. And uh, Euclidean sequences are really awesome. Um, basically, what makes it a Euclidean sequencer is that you can control the length of the pattern. So in this case, the length is currently eight. Um, and you can also can control the hits. So it's kind of like you are creating your own time signatures, basically. So four hits in a length of eight you, it's basically just like this little grid says it's just a four four situation but if i say bring the length the length up to say 16 and then the number of hits to an uneven amount like It has to slot that uneven number of hits into an even length. So you get a kind of irregular rhythm. Um, and of course you can modulate all of this stuff to get really weird stuff going. Um, let's make this a bit faster because it's a bit slow. So in the same way that the previous example showed, I'm clocking the sequencer with the Euclidean sequencer, rather than a clock. And in this case, um, instead of having a right click to show the scale of these sequences, I've got this knob here. So at the moment it's set to eight volts, but I can bring it down so to like three. Um, everything else is the same as before, but again, this is just another example of a separate gate rhythm controlling a sequencer. That's kind of just the principle of modular synthesis. Um, now, there are plenty of modules that incorporate all of this and more into a single module, and that's cool. If you want to use that, go, nu go nuts, but like, it might not. Uh, you might not initially learn what is happening and it just kind of is another way of, like it's kind of like using a, a door and like an arpeggio in a door or something. Like it's just, a, a, it's just a little toy or a trick or whatever that you can apply, but you don't necessarily know what it's doing. And the only reason you should know why or, or how it's doing what it's doing is uh, so that you can, um, mess with it so that you can subvert it 
and do different things with it and understand why it's doing it and so then you can think in different ways and figure out different ways of uh, approaching a situation and get interesting results because of that. So this is a pretty cool sequence. Um, but I just also down here have a little demonstration of gates because so this is all coming out from the gates of the Euclidean sequencer and the reason why this is important is because I'll just bring this cut off down a bit so it's not quite so loud um, a gate can be any length you really want it to be because it's just an on off signal and these tools here are all designed to uh, manipulate gate signals and um, uh, define them in different ways. So here I've got this module has a gate in and then a gate out so it's just not doing anything but I can invert the gate I'll do it with green so you can see it and inverting it literally every time the yellow gate goes off, the green one goes on, and vice versa. So that's just straight invert. But if I do start, let's just get rid of this gate. What I get is just the start of the gate. And this is the difference between a trigger and a gate. A trigger is just one snap, like at the start of the gate. It's just the shortest possible increment um, it's just a trigger, as the name suggests. Whereas a gate is an on and an off. It'll go on for a time and then it will go off again. So the start is just the tree. And here we can also have the start and the end, or just the end. Which does a trig at the end of the gate rather than the start. So I hope that makes sense. Um, over here, we have another example. And in this case, uh, this one wants a trigger in, but we're giving it a gate in and that's fine. Um, but if I hit this button down here to one shot, it'll just do it as a trig. It's just the start of the gate. But then I've got this knob here to define the length of the gate. So if I bring it up, the gate just gets longer. If I so just leave that button on so it stays on the screen and eventually because the gate's going quite fast it will just fill the screen yeah like this so eventually it'll just always be on because the gates are overlapping each other but there's a reason why you need to uh, manipulate gates like this and that would be because of envelopes. So if I just get this basic envelope and I bring this trig in here. So, and if I make it a gate. So if it's just a trig, you'll never have the option uh, of having a sustain. It'll always just be an attack and a release because the trig is just too short to go to, to support a sustain level because this is, as you know, presumably, sus sustain is when you hold down a note. So it's the volume that the synth will be set at when you, ha you when a note is held. So we need it to be held to even activate the sustain stage of the envelope. So I'm going to demonstrate this by bringing this into this scope. Let's move it over here. So if I make, let's make this slower so we can really, so we can really see it. See, it's sustaining there. And I can make the sustain high and then it will be completely at the top of the gate. And let's, let's uh, get rid of the sustain and do a long decay. And you can see that it actually gives us that decay. But if it's just a trig, and if I bring it into the trigs up here, and I bring 
Wir sind wir hier. We do not get a sustain stage. See? It's just release, effectively. <clears throat> if I bring the length in and I go through this module, we get the sustain stage. So that's important. And the standard length of a gate is quite short. Coming out of Euclidean sequences or other gate sequences, the standard length is just a pretty short on and off. So sometimes you, you do need to adjust the length of the gate. This is another one that does the same thing. If I bring this up, we'll get a longer gate. And there are a bunch of modules that do this, but I think that that's a very important thing to know, especially if you're going to be using uh, ADSRs, or, or not specifically if you're going to be using ADSRs, but if you want to have a sustained note over a long period of time, but you do want it to fade out. Like uh, an example where you wouldn't even need an ADSR is if you just wanted a continuous uh, baseline without without any um, without any volume modulation whatsoever. Then you wouldn't even need this. But if you want, like a pad is a perfect example where you want to have that evolving volume, but you want the, the gate to stay open for quite a while. If you just have a standard length gate, it's not going to work. All right, just as a quick addendum to all of this, this is a little patch that I made last night. Um, it's just three, a three part beat, um, effectively. Um, and I think that even though it looks quite complicated, I think that it kind of demonstrates uh, everything we've just talked about. So I'll just run through it pretty quickly. Uh, let's just have a listen first. <laughs> So, let's just mute some of these elements or solo some of them. So up here, I've got a 16 step sequencer, which in this case is all in one gates and pitch, and it's being clocked by this clock here. So in this case, the triggers are the red uh, buttons, and I've got it going out from the trigs. So the trigs are controlling, rather than gates, the trigs are controlling uh, when the notes happen. Um, and they are going into this ADSR along with other things. Um, and we're getting this interesting sound. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the other stuff, but effectively, sequencer, quantizer, ADSR, uh, oscillator, that's that's basically what's going on. Everything else is like modulation and extra things, extra bells and whistles, which you can get to after you understand these basics. Um, next we have this bass line, which is extremely simple. It's just this ADDR sequencer. It's only running on four steps. So it's just these four, four first knobs. That is going into the same quantizer and it's manipulating the pitch of this modern VCO here. Now, I've got a lot more filtering and aggressive stuff happening here, like it's going into two tangents. The cutoff, the resonance and the drive um, are being manipulated on both of them by uh, the Mind Meld Patch Master plugin uh, or module. Got some reverb. I've got this wave destruction debriatus from Vault module, which is, all of this stuff is going into this mixer. Um, another filter after this wave destruction. So I've got three. I've got this signal split up into three different inputs. Uh, one's the reverb, one's the raw, and then one's with this extra wave shaping and the filter. 
all of that's going into a compressor, and then this final mind meld um, or patch master macro control is controlling all the filters at once. It's also controlling some gain here and some gain here. But ultimately, at its heart, it's just this sequence playing this PCO. Everything else is just extra spice, you know? And, uh, smooth that. And in addition, as I mentioned before, uh, this is an example where I'm not using an ADSR or a VCA to control the volume of the v of the VCO. And in fact, if I stop playing with by uh, stopping the clock on this sequence, this bass sound will just continue. It will just never stop because nothing's telling it to stop. And the reason why is because I wanted the volume of the bass to be constant the whole time. And if I incorporated an, an envelope into that, I could definitely do that and it would make it stop here. But it just wasn't really necessary. Um, and then add to add to that, if I did have the envelope, I would have had to manipulate the gate length in order for it to stay held for the entire length that I wanted it to. Otherwise it would have just held for a moment and then had like, unless I turned the release up on the envelope, it would have just stopped. So let's start this again. And finally, I've got this beat, which is just gates, because beats don't need pitch. You can give them pitch, and that's a really fun, cool thing to do, but by and large, they don't need a pitch, they just need gates. So you don't need this chances here, we can get rid of that. And I've just got three drum sounds. A bass drum, a snare, and a hi-hat. That's it. So yeah, this is a fun little patch. Don't need that either. Let's get rid of that. So yeah, this is a fun little patch. Uh, I hope that it sort of gives you some idea as to fun ways to, to do things. But more than anything, I just wanted this video to sort of describe the basics of modular synthesis. Um, please let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know. I'm happy to do more videos that sort of go into detail about how things work because the fundamentals are pretty simple, I think, but they do take a little bit to wrap your head around them. Um, anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you next time.